Hello Bakers and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to be checking Unreal Engine 5. This is an Unreal Engine 5 beginner's tutorial where we are going to go over some of the features and what's the differences between Unreal Engine 4. We are mostly going to look into the main features and as well we are going to have a look into the differences in the interface. This tutorial is made to help you start with Unreal 5 and help you faster ramp up to what are the new things. Now without further ado, let's roll the intro. First, when you open Unreal Engine, uh, I already created a project which uh, has just a third person template. I will get over that in a second, how exactly you can uh, import all the starter content for uh, your projects. But uh, the first thing that uh, you will notice is that uh, we have uh, a little bit cleaner interface than what we had in Unreal Engine 4, a little bit less tabs uh, that are uh, all over the screen. Uh, so this allows us to have a better view of what exactly is happening happening uh, on the project and what exactly is happening with uh, our game. We still have our outliner, which is the place where you find all the content which is inside the scene at the moment. This means that uh, if I select something, you will see it over here highlighted or as well, if we know the name of it, we can always come over here and just select the one that we want. Of course, you can see that we can organize everything nicely inside different groups. So if we just right click and then we can create a new folder and this will create a folder. So after that, we can just hide complete blocks instead of hiding it element by element. I strongly recommend doing this. Uh, it makes your projects and everything a lot more organized and easier to find, especially if you are working with other people. And anyway, it makes it much better if you have your things well organized. Next thing that we're gonna have a look is the details panel. So this is as Unreal 4, once we select an asset, we can after that go into the details panel and have a look what exactly are all the options, scale and so on and so on for that asset. This panel changes depending on what you have selected. For geometry, we are going to have one type of options. And then for example, for lights, we are going to have something completely different. Here on the side, we have the world partition, world settings and data layers. So the world partition and data layers are the two new uh, elements that are being added to Unreal Engine 5. In Unreal 4, we had the composition tools, which were helping us to create bigger worlds or open world games, while here it's called world partition. I made a video on that topic, so if you would like to learn a little bit more, you can follow the link below or as well, it will appear somewhere on the screen. The world settings is pretty much what we had before as well on world settings, so nothing changes there. Now let's have a look on the content browser and how exactly that works. As you can see, we don't have by default any content browser or anything like this. And the way to open it is uh, there are a few ways. So first one is we can click over here to content draw. So this will open the content browser or as well, we can press control plus spacebar to open it. This might seem a little bit weird in the beginning, but uh, have in mind that uh, this is actually a very useful thing. So if I have an asset opened, and let's say I need to assign different materials to that asset. Instead of uh, having, for example, here two tabs and going into the content browser, searching for which is the material, coming over here, assigning it, what we can do is while we are inside that asset, we can click Control plus Space and it will pop us the content browser from the bottom. This way we can just drag and drop the correct materials into the slots, which makes everything faster and easier in terms of work. This is especially useful if you're dealing with textures and other things that you need to drag and drop and you need to just have a quick access to it. Of course, if this is something that is annoying you, we can always open it and after that we can dock it into the layout. This way it's going to be one of the other tabs and it will stay the same way as it was in Unreal 4. If you don't have any of those tabs on your Unreal version, we can always go into Window and click one of the settings over here. This way you can activate some of the tabs if in case they are missing. 
Now let's uh, have a look into another aspect of Unreal, how to create different content inside the scene. So before we had this tab on the side where you could choose different elements and just drag and drop them or create them in the scene. Now it works in a little bit different way. So we have this drop down over here and if I click it, you can see that uh, we have basic light shapes. These are pretty much all the things that we had on the place actor menu before, but this time it's just on a drop down. So we can go with some of the basic ones, then we can add lights, shapes and all the other things. Another thing that I would like you to notice is that we also have content browser here where we can choose if we want like to have a docking content browser, but also we have the Unreal Market integrated inside the engine. Also the Quixel Bridge, this is something that before on Unreal 4 you had to install it additionally as a plugin in order to have access inside the engine for it. So this will be a quick access and will automatically when you click it open Bridge. So this way you will be able to just go into your collection and immediately import things inside the engine. Another thing that uh, is different from Unreal 4 is uh, how we are editing the content inside at the moment. In Unreal 5 we have different modes, we had those in Unreal 4 but uh, here you toggle between them in a little bit of a different way. So at the moment we are on our select mode which allows us to go around, place different actors, select them and do all kinds of manipulations to our assets. But if we would like to edit our landscape we will need to go for example on a landscape which will automatically change a little bit the layout. So I have here on the second screen I'm just going to drag it over here and it will open our uh, layout for creating landscapes and after that uh, editing all the landscapes and doing everything that we need uh, to do related with landscapes. As well we have foliage, mesh paint, modeling and all the other different modes that we can choose from inside the editor. Another thing that uh, we can do same way as Unreal 4 is to import different assets. If I open the content browser we can either right click and import or we can just drag and drop an asset inside the editor and this way we can import all of our things. If you would like to learn more about importing and especially about Nanite and how to create Nanite meshes in Unreal, I made a video recently which is on that topic. There will be a link down in the description below and again it will appear somewhere as a pop-up on the screen. Now let's look into how to add some of the starter packs if you didn't manage to do this when you're creating your project. If we open the content browser, you will see that here there is on the very end a button which is for adding. And if we click it, then we will be able to go into add featured or content pack, which will open the tab for the starter packs. Here for Unreal 5, the starter packs are a little bit different than the ones from Unreal 4. So there is like a first, third person and so on and so on. There are differently built content depending on what exactly you would like to start. We have some of them which are built for blueprints, for C++, or as well we have just a starter content which includes some materials and other pre-built assets that can help you start with your project. This will include everything which is for the basics for Unreal. Subscribe to the channel so that you can follow all of my Unreal 5 tutorials. And as well, I'm making more tutorials for digital artists. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time.